good evening to everyone. Today we continue our teaching on the Mass. And for the last four weeks, we have listened to the four parts of the Mass. That is the introductory rite, liturgy of the Word, liturgy of the Holy Eucharist, and the concluding rites. Today, I will be sharing with you on preparation for Holy Mass. And I will begin by stating that the Holy Mass is the source and summit of our Christian life. In other words, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life. Everything about our Christian life begins from the Eucharist and ends in the Holy Eucharist, and that is the teaching of the church. And the church also advises that our participation for Mass should be full, should be active, and should be conscious. Should be full, active, and conscious. Full means without distraction. Active means we take part in the various responses to the Mass. And conscious means that we should actually know what we are doing. If we are asking for something, we should actually come and ask God for that thing. And therefore, in order to benefit from the fruits of the Holy Eucharist and the Mass, which, as I've said, is a source and summit of our Christian life, we need adequate preparation. And preparation can take different forms and different areas. And the first area of preparation is the fact that our preparation for Holy Mass begins not during the Mass, but at home, when we are still at home. That is the beginning of preparation at home. And at home, it is very important that we can look into the readings of the Mass before we come for Mass. And we have a lot of uh, booklets for that, little booklets that the parish prepares for people to take home. And during the week, we could actually take time if we are coming for Mass on Sunday or we are, we are coming for a, a weekday Mass, we could actually look at the readings before coming for Mass. In that way, we know what is going to be read in Mass. In that way, we can also reflect on the Gospel even before coming, which means what the priest is sharing with the parishioners during Mass is actually what you have taken time and reflected upon. So preparation begins at home. And uh, we can also buy a Misa. It causes no harm. But I prefer the little booklet because they have the dates, they have everything laid out for us. Another way to prepare for Mass while we are still at home is to know what liturgical season we are into. Sometimes it can be a little bit strange if we don't know what season it is. Imagine the parishioner not knowing that we are at Lent. Imagine during Christmas, the parishioner does not know that that, that is the Christmas period. Imagine that we don't know that it is the Advent season. And therefore, it's very important to know what season we are into that will enable us to be able to prepare for, for Mass adequately. And besides, we also have other material and resources that the parish provides for us to reflect. We have the black book during uh, Lent, and we also have the blue book maybe in other seasons. And therefore, the first part of our preparation is at home, and it's very important for us to take time and uh, have it as a habit. It looks very simple, but we should actually cultivate a habit to prepare to do the readings and take time to reflect before coming for Mass. The second point about preparation is the fact that for us to receive the Holy Eucharist at Mass, it is important for us to do so in the state of grace. St. Paul says that those who receive the Holy Eucharist in the state of mortal sin receive their own condemnation. I don't know if we have ever read that about St. Paul. 
And therefore, it's very important that before we receive the Holy Eucharist, we should go for the sacrament of reconciliation. And if we go for the sacrament of reconciliation, it prepares us to receive the Holy Eucharist in the state of grace. And the reason is that if we don't receive the Holy Eucharist in the state of grace, we will not be able to benefit from the graces that flow from the Holy Eucharist. They will be there, but they will be dormant. In order to receive those graces from the Holy Eucharist, we need to be in the state of grace. And the sacrament of reconciliation helps us in that regard. And the third area of preparation is observing the one hour fast before Holy Communion. A lot of traditional Catholics do this, but some people just ignore it. It is recommended that before you receive Holy Communion, try as much as possible to observe one hour of fast. This helps us to be able to keep aside any other thing that we were thinking about and to concentrate and focus our minds in the blessed sacrament that we shall receive during Mass. So one hour of fast before Mass. And another area would, is that it is important for us to dress properly, dress properly. When we are meeting Jesus Christ, imagine that you were to meet with the president of America. How will you dress? Imagine that you were to meet with some high-ranking personality. How will you dress? And if it is so with earthly authority, what more of Jesus Christ? who is the king of kings, lord of lords. What about Jesus Christ? And therefore, it's very important. And concerning dressing, there's no ruling, actually, on how to dress. We have to use our own initiative to be able to get what decent dressing is. And uh, therefore, it's good for us to have that in mind that it's important to dress in such a way that we don't become a distraction to ourselves and to others. Another area of uh, preparation is uh, time management. It is important for us to come early for mass. And uh, when we come early for mass, it helps us to recollect our spirit before mass. Take time to recollect yourself. And experience has shown that when we come late for mass, it takes us quite a great deal to be able to concentrate and to recollect ourselves and to focus on the mass, the readings, and stuff like that. And therefore, it's important for us to also try to, you may be late once, twice, it's okay, but it cannot be a habit that every time you are late. So it's important for us also to come early. And the good news is that a lot of people are always time conscious, that is the good news. And that has always been my experience. And another aspect of preparation is that when we come to church, don't just move into a pew. Just go in and sit. No, it's also recommended that we could give a profound bow or genuflect before you go into your seat. And that already is already giving us that we are in a different ground, a holy ground. Remember the story of Moses in the burning bush. God told him, remove your shoes because you are in the holy ground. And therefore, once we enter the church, there will be that difference between the church and any other space that is not dedicated for worship. And when our children see us, the way we react in church, it sticks into their minds. And they're able to also keep that. And I used to see there was a little boy that I knew he was a very uh, nice young man. So the parents would come and face the altar before genuflecting, and this young man would enter the church and rather face the back of the church before being genuflecting. But the good news is that at least he knew that there was a difference between the church and any other space that they went to for that day. So it's very important to, to do that. And uh, another aspect of preparation is silence. Silence. When we come to church, we could respect or keep a moment of silence and uh, reflect 
and recollect ourselves. It's true, you may meet some friends that you have not seen for a while. You could uh, share a few greetings, and that is okay. But after that, it's good for you to sit down and uh, say and, and stay a little bit quiet and uh, have some moments of silence within yourself. Silence within yourself is very important. And uh, again, another area of preparation is to have an intention. Never come for mass without an intention. It's true that during mass there is an intention that is offered and the lector will normally read that during the prayers of the faithful, but each and every one of us should actually bring an intention for mass. I've gotten people say, I came for mass, I, I didn't receive, I don't feel that I was for mass, I don't feel that I'm receiving anything, but what do we bring for mass? It's very important. It could be, for example, you could bring, the, a family member is sick, it's also good to say, oh, God help this is my brother, this is my wife or husband who is sick. It could be that you have some challenges in life, whatever. Bring it to Jesus and present it to him and offer it to him. It could be that you are suffering with a particular vice. Ask Jesus, help me to be able to overcome this vice. It could also be because you want to, it could also be that you want a certain virtue. Ask Jesus, help me in this virtue. It could be the virtue of kindness, patience, and also maybe forgiveness and other virtues. Ask Jesus to help you. Don't come to Mass without an intention. When you are coming to Mass, say an intention. And for, for priests, we always bring an intention. And whenever I kiss the altar, that is, I say my intention before beginning the mass. And even saying, before saying the Eucharistic prayer, I have an intention that I say. It could be for someone that I visited and is sick, a family member that I know. Someone who said, Father, pray for me, and so on. It could be for the parishioners. We have those, those intentions. And each one of us should bring an intention during mass bring an intention. This is a serious point because a lot of people come to church maybe more or less as a, as a habit, but you should be conscious. You know that that day is dedicated to the Lord. You are coming to acknowledge the fact that you are not self-sufficient and that there is a God on whom you depend. You acknowledge his greatness, but at the same time, it is an opportunity for you to ask Jesus to give you a particular gift and we always have those gifts that we need from Jesus. You could even ask Jesus to forgive you your sins. And uh, one of the things that I always recommend to parishioners is that your first prayer when you are coming to church, as you enter the church, should be, Oh Lord, help me to attend this Mass fruitfully. Because everything is grace. If God doesn't give you the grace, you may come back and go back as you came. But if you are aware of the fact that everything comes from God, your first prayer will always be, Oh Lord, help me to attend this Mass fruitfully. Help me to participate in this Mass fruitfully. And God will always give you what you want if it is his will and if it is what he sees that it is good for you. And the aspect of personal prayer is very important. And again, I would like to end with the exhortation that we have various resources available to us that helps us to prepare for Mass. Make use of those resources. Say a prayer before the Mass begin, begins. And uh, always consecrate yourself to Jesus before the Mass begins. And preparation, as I've said, begins from home and uh, continues right into church and continues from where the priest begins the Mass and see where we start the Mass. And therefore, today is a very wonderful opportunity that we take time to remind ourselves, I call these holy reminders, that not uh, 
things that uh, we don't know, most often we know, but we always need to remind ourselves every time. And therefore, it is uh, a wonderful opportunity that the parish has given to us to be able to reflect on the Mass, which is the source and summit of everything, our Christian life. And the good thing that I realized in uh, sharing this talk was the fact that it also helped me to remind myself of many things regarding the Mass. Helps, it helped me a lot personally, and uh, it's a good opportunity for all of us, and let us use this opportunity to partic participate in the Mass fully, actively, and consciously. And thank you very much for your kind attention, and uh, next week we shall end with the teaching on the reception of Holy Communion. And we are invited for soup after this talk, so please to digest the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>